Hello, welcome to week four of the Brewgooders. So more comics and beer chat with me, Colin, and Jeff. Hi. Hey. So yeah. what we're going to start with well, this week? Well, Jeff? what have we got today? We've got um, we thought we'd talk about this beer that we both had earlier in the week called uh, Raspberry Carinade by Bruton and Peter Heed. Peter Heed. Peter Heed. Um, and then we've got what else we got to talk about? We've got a uh, Overtone um, Brewery's Cashmere Lager. And we've got uh, the Wild Beer Company's Pogo. And then comic-wise, we've got um, the uh, issue eight. But I'm going to be kind of overviewing the whole Heroes in Crisis series by Deezer, uh, by Deezer, by DC. And I'm also going to be talking about War Scrolls, which is a four-part story, four stories in um, the War of the Realms event that Marvel are doing just now. Okay, and my comics this week are The Magic Order, which just finished a six-week, uh, six-issue run. So this is uh, the first Miller World Stroke Netflix um, series. Um, and the other comic I'm going to be talking about is Daredevil. So I'll be looking at issue one, but I think it's on about issue four now. Okay, so That's let's kick off let's yeah. tell people about Raspberry Carnade from Brewtoon. So we both, both bought this independently. Yeah. Um, about a week ago, and tried it independently. Jeff, you're we weren't very independent. This um, yeah, I really liked it. Um, it's a raspberry cream ale. So we had a well, I had a raspberry um, sour beer um, a couple of weeks ago, mm. and wasn't and didn't enjoy it at all. Yeah, um, this reminded me more of like the topaz that um that we got from Inner Bay last week, mm. which was a uh, which. Lovely smooth. Beer. It was smooth and yeah. it was smooth, but I also thought that the um I thought the the the, the, ras- the passion fruit tastes in mm-hmm. that beer complemented the beer and I thought it was the same with the raspberry carinade. Um I thought it was really smooth. Um, it was a, a raspberry cream ale rather than a raspberry sour, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think created a different blend. I remember messaging you and saying I really enjoyed it and thought it was quite smooth. I remember you saying it was quite sharp. I thought so. Um, yeah, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as you. I'm, I'm, I'm always dubious about these sort of uh, fruity kind yeah. of beers. Um, you know, so, so they're a bit of a hit or a miss for me. Um, I was less um, enamoured with it. I did think it was it was a bit too kind of bitter. It could have been a, a little bit sweeter. Um, but, you know, it was reasonably pleasant. You know, it wasn't unpleasant. I would certainly drink it again, but not like by the gallon load. That's not as um. I thought it was smooth. I also thought that um, it, 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 it tasted blended. Um, as I say, I had a, a raspberry, other raspberry beer a couple of weeks ago and I mm. felt like that one was, um, I felt like they'd made a beer and then they then mixed in raspberry flavour and almost like a lager pop uh-huh. or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Whereas okay. I didn't feel that with the raspberry carinade. I felt it was more... Um, it was more part of it. It was part yeah, of the yeah, beer. The, and, the and I just really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's funny. It's not going to be our beer in the week because... Um, yeah, because we can't agree on it. I have got some other uh, beers from Brewtoon, mm-hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to trying them. Um, I don't, I don't mango one, haven't you? Did I make that up? I'm not entirely sure oh. what the one is. There, there's definitely a mango can't one. Can't so your we'll, we'll see. We'll see what what, what it's like. Um, um, yeah, not our beer of the week um, for sure, but interesting. Try it. Give it a try. Yeah, um, it might be your thing. You know, Jeff likes it. Um, less keep. Okay. Um. Our first comic of the week, uh, I, I'm going to look like I'm staring intently at the screen, but it's because actually I've got a bit of a prompter on the screen now. Um, I read Heroes in Crisis, which was um, it's a nine-part series that's been put out by DC, um, by Tom King, the main writer on it, who does a lot of Batman stuff. Um, mm-hmm. He, um, as I say, we're on part eight of a nine-part series this read very much like it could have been quite a, a good season finisher, like a, a mm-hmm. story finisher. Yeah. So I'm interested to see where this goes. And I was initially going to review it from a complete point, but issue eight is quite a it's been quite a controversial controversial issue oh. in comic them. So I uh, I thought I'd talk about it now. So I think it okay. lost, I think it lost in the drama. I felt felt no, no, no. I felt we were more newsy. Well, I, I, I am blissfully unaware of what's been going on. So okay. please. So Heroes in Crisis um, is set in a facility called Sanctuary, which looks like from the outside a farmhouse in a, in a you can see it in the front cover, um, please ignore the dead bodies on the bottom of the, 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 the comic because actually the rest of the cover 
makes quite a serene, picturesque, beautiful sunset and um, scene with a number of um, DC superheroes looking at a farmhouse in the distance, which is Sanctuary. When you go into Sanctuary, it's actually a, a large underground complex that mm -hmm. is um, essentially rehab for superheroes, allowing them the opportunity to deal with uh, post-traumatic stress disorders and other mental health issues and personality oh, levels. Okay, I have actually heard yeah. of this, yeah. So it's like any any reason you would need, it's therapy, it's counselling for superheroes. Um, it's a it's secret to the public, so the public don't know about Sanctuary in order for the the um the facade, the the image of superheroes to go on and tarnish, you know, if, mm. um, which I think is quite interesting because it talks about, you know, um, we live in a society, particularly in Scotland, I, um, I know we've got listeners and viewers from quite a wide range of areas. Particularly in Scotland at the moment, um, mental health is becoming a much more accepted issue in society, but until very recently it was a bit of a taboo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also things like um, mental health and trauma and post-traumatic stress are things that I've noticed in my family. Um, so it, 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 it struck a personal uh, chord for me as well, which, I, yeah, which made so me want to read it. It's comics reflecting yeah, what's happening yeah, in exactly. the real world. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So like the, this, this facility is secret because um, the, the heroes recognise that the, the public don't want to see them with any sort of discernible weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, it is a confidential arrangement for the superheroes as well. So they can go into this facility. It's set up for them so that they can go in secretly and other users of the facility wouldn't know they were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, unless they, I think they chose to. I think there's there's public areas within the facility for those that feel like they they are comfortable sharing okay. that they're there. Um, issue one begins with quite a brutal slaughter on the on the front lawn of sanctuary, um, mm -hmm. and, and quite a large uh, quite a large number of um, quite known superheroes die. As uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to name any just in case somebody wants to read it. But actually, if you bought issue one, you can see their their dead bodies on the front cover of mm -hmm. issue one, oh um, and it includes some uh, yeah relatively well known series. A lot of guys I know from like the DC TV series were included in this in this death. Um, uh, it focuses on Batman, Flash. For quite a while, it's quite a slow series. I found it start. It, it starts on um, Batman and Flash are investigating the issue and have drawn separate conclusions on who they think the murderer is. So there's a who done it element to it. Mm -hmm. um, um, Harley Quinn and Booster Gold are both set up um, to think that they may have something they've done with the murderers. They can't recall it. They both have some sort of amnesia, mm -hmm. um, so they don't know if they were part of. They don't know if they've done it or not. But also, it looks like it could have been either of them. So they're trying to hunt each other down to find out if the other one yeah. was involved in the, in the, these murders. And it, it's really, really good. So it's who done it tied around um, tied around this yeah, idea. Yeah, so it sounds a bit like a kind of locked locked house. Yeah. Who done it kind of murder it, mystery. It's quite interesting. Um, yeah. Um, the art is really good, and I think the art reflects the the panels quite a lot. I don't want to give too much in this way. Obviously, um. Because there's like whole big stretches of oh actually that's a bit massive spoiler. <laughs> there's whole big stretches of of, of front uh, front pages. There's also I'm trying to find them. Most of the uh, issues have these. I should have got another issue down. They have these panels that look a bit like this. So it's um, uh, it's just three, six, or nine panels, and it is it is filmed as as long as uh, I say it's filmed. Um, it's framed as a as a sort of confidential um, conversation between the superhero and and and, and like a, a video diary. Oh, like uh, a Big Brother. Yeah, or like, 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 yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, like the diary room. Yeah, yeah, diary so they um yeah. they, these these appear throughout each issue, and the different residents or the the different the, the, the patients within Sanctuary have their moments, mm -hmm. um, and those are quite powerful as well. They're quite emotive. Um, the artwork is quite good. I, I'll, I'll need to put some up online that doesn't have um such a spoiler issue um, but they'll have like um, a, a character over nine panels trying to convince themselves that uh, trying to convince themselves that they're okay and then there'll be a, there'll be a, a quite a sly or subtle um, there'll be a, a subtle like look at the floor or look to the mm -hmm. sky where they can't quite make contact uh, they, they can't, can't quite make eye contact with the camera Actually, there it's us that they're not being able to make con eye contact yeah, with. Yeah. So and it's just really, really powerful. It was a really interesting series. Yeah. Um, issue eight, which um, 
was quite wonderful kind of brings a, has brought it to a close it could have fin- I think finished the series on itself it could have led to another series um, it's quite a controversial issue because you actually find out kind of what's actually happened at, yeah. at Sanctuary and a lot of long term fans of certain characters are massively unhappy with it um, writer Tom King again who has, he, he takes part in a lot of stuff hmm. within DC he's received um, threats online and which is ridiculous. Yeah, and it is ridiculous. It's become a thing, hasn't it? Has it has become a thing. Yeah. And just yeah, re- 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 really well written, really well drawn. Um, uh, it was. Um, I wanted to just note that these guys here are. Um, they kind of do this thing where half the comics written by one artist and half written by another, mm-hmm. which I think is how they managed to get a nine part series out quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's maybe two, two, maybe two of these a month yeah. actually. Um, but uh, Mitch Gerrards and Travis Moore. Both do it. I noticed Gerard's. I think Gerard's the main guy, and I might be wrong, but he's the main guy behind the the really emotive, um, um, camera sh- uh, camera uh, shots. But also he does a lot of action shots. I like really really well. He does um mm-hmm. his pull outs and he does quite a lot happens on the page when he draws. And I, I understand that as I, said, I did my way my research for this. I understand he he won the Eisner Award for art last year. Nice. So he's actually he's actually a a, a, a very well established mm-hmm. artist. That, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gorgeous and it has huge ramifications for the whole DC universe and it's, it feels like it's an important story. It's talking about themes that are that are quite incredible, actually, and to see them in comics and using such well-known characters is quite amazing. So yeah, if you haven't checked out anyway, I imagine they're going to do the, the trade paperback quite soon, but we're on, a, we're on issue 8, issue 9, I think, mm. is either next week or the week after. Um, so I think it will get... They do that, don't they? they yeah, I see. imagine it will be fairly yeah. soon. So yeah, yep. check it out. Okay. So we're on to our second comic. Yeah. Then okay, so I'm gonna look at the Magic Order, which at this point in time has finished its run of six issues and it's not going to get reprinted. However, it is out in the collection this week, so it's a collected trade paperback edition. But um, this is the first uh, Netflix comic. So if you don't know the story, Mark Miller, famous Scottish uh, writer, his uh, whole empire of comics has been bought up by Netflix, um, and um, the Millerverse. Yeah, the Millerverse um, or Miller World. Um, so, um, this is the first series to be brought out under that new brand. So, the Magic Order. Uh, so six parts, and what's the premise? It's um, there are a bunch of uh, magic. Uh, wielding families who have been around for thousands of years and they protect the earth from supernatural, supernatural basically anything supernatural and completely cover things up so that we can live a normal life and never realize or you know that anything yeah. you know like that exists whether they be you know kind of demons or ghosts or whatever kind of creature however uh, we find out in this story which is set in modern day times that um, uh, there, there's an assassin going around killing off some of the, the magic users. Okay. Um, and it looks like there is a kind of dark order of um, of magic users um, led by um, Lady Al- Albany. I think it's Lady. Anyway, Albany is the leader and she has got this assassin. assassin uh, and it turns out that she's, she's looking for this book of magic spells. Yeah. These dark magic spells, which are um, held by this one family called the Moonstones, and the Moonstones are a bit of a kind of dysfunctional type family. Yeah. Um, it's I would kind of describe it as a bit of a cross between um, Umbrella Academy and Harry Potter. Okay. It's got that kind of feel about it. It's 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 Harry Potter R rated, you know Harry okay. Potter, yeah. um, kind of. But a very dysfunctional family, you know. There's there's one who's kind of given up on magic. There's one who's got kind of you know various other issues. They don't, issue they, don't, one, they don't get on. I read issue one, and there's yeah, they don't get on. There's um, there are different kinds of even within their sort of the the, the magic that they um, if I can remember correctly, because it was ages ago. But it's the magic that they all um, they they present quite different as well so there's one who's a bit like yes. a, he's like a Las Vegas musician different yeah. powers um, yeah. that, that some of them have and there are clearly some that are more powerful than yeah. others um, so anyway um, Madame Albany is after this um, this book of dark spells um, and it's, it's held by these moonstones and 
the whole story is about you know the conflict between them, the various characters getting bumped off by this assassin that nobody can defeat. You know, nobody knows who it is. Um, there's all these different characters with different abilities and things, and the story is in itself kind of almost a magic trick. Okay. Because, um, you know, mag magic is all a bit sleight of hand, and mm -hmm. you know, getting people's attention on something so that they miss something over okay. here and that's kind of what how it plays out mm. is that you're, you're without giving too much away you can you're always watching the wrong characters yeah. but you just don't know it and that's not really a spoiler because you won't see it coming i really don't think even okay. though i told, told you that i don't think you'll see it yeah. you know but it's cleverly worked out does that make you go back to it does a little bit and you go oh boy you know okay maybe yeah. i should have seen that beforehand um so it is a kind of clever sleight of hand throughout mm. the whole story um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, issue one, you weren't so sure I about. I wasn't sure. sure. I, I actually, I adored it, hoping that had because what I like about Image, and what I like about uh, Miller, is that they they they're both known for kind of experimental six pars. And, yeah. And I quite like the idea that if I'm not enjoying something, I can. It's only going to be short. It's yeah. going to be yeah. short, but I can also yeah. follow it through to yeah. a conclusive end. And I might, I might enjoy it towards yeah. the end, um, but I just, I just didn't feel like sticking it out. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like I probably should have. Yeah, yeah I, I've been a little bit like that with some Miller World stuff in the past, where you know I've, I've loved some of them. Some of them have started off well and then kind of waned, and I, I've hated it. Yeah. There was one you lent me um, that I really enjoyed, and you didn't. And I know oh, that's that's one of the ones that's going to be made. The reborn time. one, yeah, isn't I it? I like that, and that's yeah. that's going to be a Netflix series. I supposedly, yeah, they're they're supposedly making reborn into um, a Netflix series. Um, there's talk of uh, one of the Jupiter Jupiter's Legacy or Jupiter Circle. In fact, there's been some pictures of some of the um, actors. Yeah, okay. You know, kind of as the characters. Um, so hopefully that's going to come. It's the idea that this will eventually become something as well. Yeah, know? I was disappointed because on Netflix there is a TV show called The Order, which just started, and yeah. it's about a sort of magical university. And I thought it was this. I thought it was this. No, it wasn't. And it wasn't. It's, no. it's sort of teeny kind of um, <laughs> Sabrina kind of thing. No, not that. Not that. Hey, Sabrina actually quite like the new TV series, but um, it wasn't this. Which I was disappointed at. I thought, yeah. oh, at last we're going to see a, a Miller world that's been kept quiet awfully well. But no, it's not that. So hopefully Magic Corridor will come out as that. Um, so like I said, this was a, no reprints of this, so you won't be able to get the six-part series. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a feature of the Netflix things or not, but you can get the trade paperback, which is out just this past week. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, one thing i also say about... Um, the Miller World stuff is it tends to take ages to come out. I mean, this is June last year when yeah, this came out. This when you said you know, this is June last year, um, and it's only just finished this past week. You know, so they're not quite monthly. You know, you can have to wait two or three months sometimes for some of these. And that it? annoys me because I, I end up just saving them up and reading them all mm -hmm. at the end, and I may as well have just waited for the trade paperback. Yeah. And saved a bit of money, but I did get this one particularly because they said the no reprint. So okay. what I've got here is limited edition. So you've got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's the magic order. Cool. Um, I'm going to open this a beer. Okay. It's been, put this in the fridge. So this is Overtone uh, Cashmere Lager. So we have a look. Um, Overtone Brewing Company is based in uh, Glasgow. So the. I don't know, the New Albion industrial estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen a few of their beers in the local um, There are this, this kind of nice um, contemporary art on most of the cans as well. Did you see that yeah, in the video? Yeah, like abstract, uh, mm -hmm. minimalist artwork. Yeah. yeah, so certainly the Caledonian Craft Beer Merchant, our local store, yeah. had uh, quite a few of their beers. I just want a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm not drinking that. tonight. Um, I'm just having a little so sip. It's, um, so this is a cashmere lager. It's clean. It's, it's, it says it's supposed to be clean and crisp, um, with overtones of lemon, lime, and melon. Um, quite cloudy for a lager. It's quite a strong lager. I think it's, it's a bit a strong uh, flavour uh, smell. It's five percent. So, mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Nice head on it. Definitely, um, you can definitely smell a melon in there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Boy, that's a very different lager. Yeah, it's not what I was expecting. I 
It's crisp. It's refreshing. It sure is. Um, not not good really getting a fruity no. sort of flavour from from it personally. I've noticed what that's happening a lot with us. We're, when we're doing this, we're finding kind of overpowering smells that don't translate into the, the overall flavour of the beer, which I find quite confusing. But that's just a nice lager. It is, I, I yeah. think I'm a... It's not filtered, which is quite interesting, because lager tends to be filtered. It tends to be, that's why it's yeah. that's quite, That yeah. explains your clue there. It's got Pilsner hops, hops in it. Um, the, the yeast is Southern German, which I is like quite it. traditional. I like that a lot, actually. That's a, it's very pleasant as someone who's not really much of a lager mm. drinker. Oh, see, I took actually, advantage of the fact that you weren't going to be really yeah, drinking. It's, it's, it, it feels more, it tastes more like you know, a blonde or something. Yeah. Which is, you know, kind of one step away from a lager. I'm going to look at um, the hops a wee bit more because I find that quite interesting in that we drink a lot of stuff that has like galaxy hops and I don't know the difference between a galaxy hop and a cashmere hop, mm-hmm. for example. And so that's something that I tend to look at. I do know that um, they say the yeast is a German lager um, yeast, which is, I think, quite interesting because mm-hmm. probably the only, only, uh, last week you, you, you hit me with a beer fact. Do you know where the word lager comes from? Um, I actually don't know. Lager is lager comes from a Ger- a German word to mean store, like so. It, I thought lager was an uh, when I I went to beer tasting. Oh right, so the idea that, that, that lager, the word lager cool, means to keep store. It cool. Yeah, keep it cool in the store. You yeah. know, maybe, yeah. It it, okay. it it does come from a word from was it a lot of like it comes from like Bavaria kind of mm-hmm. South yeah, Germany of course, kind of, yeah. which is interesting. So like it's using we're using Southern German lager yeast in this can. Which is obviously where the word lager comes from. Mm. So, yeah. Well, I like it. I like that one a lot. I would drink that. That's yeah. Yeah. It was quite inexpensive as well. I mean, it's quite a big can mm-hmm. for um the, for most like, craft beer. But um yeah. Maybe something drunk. Very pleasant. I'll certainly try uh, yeah. some more overtone. But, awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I do want to try more overtone stuff. Very pleasant. My uh, second comic is a uh, War Scrolls, which is a. Uh, um, Part of the War of the Realms event that Marvel are doing just now, so this is the big event. It's the big event. So big thing. Um, Marvel. It's been, it's been. I've quite enjoyed it. Um, I don't think I'm enjoying it as. I don't know why, but I'm not because I, I can't work out yet. I'm maybe not enjoying it as much as I've enjoyed previous events or DC events. Um, I don't know if I've just done so many events now that I, I kind of know where they're going before they've got there. Mm. But um, that's comic, but that's particularly superhero comics yeah. in general. You have to kind of accept it's, it's that as part of it. It's going to wind up with a big fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, currently in War of the Realms, we have just been dealing with, like you say, Act 1 is just about finished. Act 2 is about to start this week, which I'm quite excited about. Um, Act 1 is about that big fight that sets up the rest of the series. And uh, we have had this big giant assault on North America by um, pretty much a combined... A unit of Malaketh, the Dark Elves forces. Mm-hmm. So um, he has marched across all nine realms, and he's just come to the last realm, which is Midgard, which is what the gods in the realm, the god mm-hmm. godly realms, call Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so this, they're having this big, massive fight in um in Manhattan, obviously, because that's where they always have big, massive fights in mm-hmm. Marvel. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And what I find quite interesting is. Um, the, the, the main series, the main War of the Realms line has been dealing predominantly with this battle and then they've been, this big huge battle and then what they've done a lot is, is they've put a lot of tie-ins to this event from different, yeah. uh, from different stories, what, um, from different uh, characters. So we've had, uh, I've just finished reading uh, the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl and how she got involved in the event. Yeah, so um, we can see kind of the whole range of characters yeah. that's there. I'm quite intrigued there that Daredevil seems to be framed Quite a lot That's of quite deliberate, and um, yeah. uh, so um, he's right front and center, but kind of framed between the other characters. Yeah, We've got right Captain Marvel, Thor and, Captain Thor, Marvel yeah. and then whoever's hand so, that's, so that's how um, I think that's one of the ice trolls, okay. which is um, Loki's dad's an ice troll. If yeah. I remember that, yeah, correctly. No, I may I not have got the yeah, race right. right. Um, so War Scrolls has four stories, the credit list is huge, and the quality and substance uh, contained in each story reflects this. So we have um. A, a Daredevil story called The God Without Fear Part 1 which um, was written by Jason Aaron and drawn by Andrea Sorrentino um, Jason Aaron I don't know much of his work apart from the fact that he's one of the main guys in Thor right now um, and then you've got um, a, sto- a, a really fun um, A Warriors 3 story uh, by Josh Trujillo and Ricardo Lopez Ortiz and then 
um, we have a Wolverine and Punisher story. It's, it's actually called Nice Shot Frank, and it's only about six or seven pages long. But mm. it was uh, written by Ram V, who we reviewed mm. in week one of the podcast. Yeah, that's right. Um, These and savage then, shorts. And then drawn by uh, Calf V as well. And then there's a Howard the Duck short at the end as well called War of the Realms. Um, so mm. uh, The God Without Fear, I think, is the... It's quite interesting. Two of the stories are very serious. Two of the stories are very comedic. Um, the God Without Fear part one, the Daredevil story... It, it is amazing actually I, I want to use that word it's um um the artwork is great there's a the first couple of pages is a is daredevil is daredevil recalling a flashback to a moment where he'd met mm-hmm. four which is really cool so the artwork reflects the fact that it's an older time yeah in his timeline so the the artwork is older it's as so we looked at that yeah, it's got that screen print and yeah, the screen like printed from like, last week there, the um comic book but also it's 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 Daredevil recalling how he met Thor. So we do have um we have Heart B A. So he's he's walking through New York. He's he's you're seeing as well as a screen printed view. You're also kind of seeing the world from Daredevil's mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. So you're seeing he there's people on the floor lying around. He's walking over <clears> them and he's he's listening for the heartbeats. Thor's coming down from the sky, doing the thing with his hammer to keep mm-hmm. himself in the air, and um, he can hear and feel. Yeah. The, the vibrations of that hammer making that movement and it was just yeah. really really interesting um, and then the rest of the, the story continues to Daredevil fighting uh, ice trolls in Manhattan and um, at this part of the story Manhattan has been evacuated by the, the Avengers and Daredevil's going around picking up like priests and, and maybe slower like lesser able people and trying to get them into safety mm-hmm. um, there's a I don't know how much to show but there's some really nice pictures here. I'm going to put this picture here. I want people to notice that Daredevil is holding a big, massive sword, and Daredevil doesn't usually hold a big, massive sword. Not normally. But that um that is reflective of the role that he's going to be playing in War of the Realms. Um, it's a very specifically, very specific large sword, which if you've seen any of the four films, you might actually recognise. Okay. Um. <clears throat> um. It seems to be that what War of the Realms is doing is it's taking some of its major Marvel heroes. And putting them in sort of godly positions because the gods have fallen. Mm-hmm. So like I think there's a there's a an act too. There's going to be a Spider Man story in one of these kind of compendiums that has him fighting with like a god's helmet, like a, a helmet we'd associate with an Asgardian. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's pretty cool, and it just seems to be, I think that seems to be the gimmick. It's um, superheroes filling the shoes of roles that would be traditionally godlike, um, and the Daredevil one is amazing, <clears throat> actually. Um, there's a really there's a really cool bit here where um he is analysing a troll um, a nice troll and um you see a you see a body from Daredevil's perspective. So mm-hmm. yeah. he can see and feel sound and textures and he understands where he needs to hit this troll to bring him down to the ground and stuff, which I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um uh, then there's three other stories. I'll run through them very, very quickly. That was the main story and I think the one that they're 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 going with uh, there was a picture of Spider Man I'm showing there actually oh, yeah. uh, that's Guardian yeah, of the Gear. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a story with the Warriors Three that I think is quite funny with them trying to get um them trying to get involved in the main fight and uh, but at the same time trying to carry around the big guy whose name is a Volstag who's the big member of the Warriors Three so they they want to get involved and they they don't like the fact that they're kind of not these big grand Asgardians are not getting part yeah. of the big fight. And it's quite funny because they talk to each other in this really um, Shakespearean kind yeah. of language. Yeah, and, um, yeah. But they're arguing, having quite a petty argument as they do so, which was quite funny. Um, and the art, um, the artist on it I thought was, I wanted to mention, because I thought the artwork was really good on it. Um, a lot of zoom-ins on faces and it was quite emotive. Uh, so the artist on that was uh, um, Ricardo Lopez Ortiz. I just thought um it was just nicely drawn, um, it was very it was a very funny story um and actually kind of reflected that these guys are on quite a noble quest. They're supposed to be looking after their friend, but they're angry that their noble quest is that and not something else, which I thought was quite funny. And then there's um as I say the the Ram V written six panel story, or not six panel story, maybe six or seven pages story about the Punisher and Wolverine. Mm. Um, but it was quite nice. It was um two children that had been rescued by Wolverine but they had done something in the fight to kind of point out that he might have got hurt mm-hmm. so they um, they meet their mum in the, in, a, in a safe space and they're telling mum the story of how they saved Wolverine <laughs> which was quite nice 
Um, and it made me think of like um, um, it made me want to think. I quite like that perspective of the story. I quite like that it's a story told by people on the street during this huge mm-hmm. event. Yeah. Um, and it made me think of like when we watch um, uh, the Avengers movies and like. You, know, you, you you're always focused on the superheroes diving off buildings and saving things but actually mm-hmm. you know it's cool to see a story from the perspective of the guy that they've ushered into a building so they can have their fight yeah um, I quite like yeah. that um, and uh, yeah and then there's a there's a Howard the Duck story which I don't I found the comedy quite jarring because it went serious comedy serious comedy mm-hmm. and I'm leaving the story the Howard the Duck story is basically him trying to pay his rent by rescuing a dog that just happens to be stuck in the middle of this huge battle. So, like, he, he he's on a relatively noble quest to rescue an animal, but it's purely for, purely for selfish reasons. <laughs> and, as I don't know enough about um, Howard the Duck, but the art's quite interesting. It's quite um, jarring when you see it with mm, sort of the yeah, more traditional, serious yeah. drones. Um, but it was quite funny, and it, it, there was a punchline, and I think I need to go back and do it, but I think his driver is Aunt May, I'm not quite sure, but he has an old lady. Howard the Duck doesn't drive. He has an old lady that drives him mm-hmm. around, and I think it's Aunt May. He, oh, re- he okay. refers to her as May, but I just thought it was... um. Yeah, so it, was, it was quite funny. Um, the, uh, um, and, as I say, it was it was a comedic end, but it sets up... It, it, set up like, it was quite an interesting way to... Well, that's a total spoiler, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, <totally is. laughs> so, uh, there's a... Yeah, it was, it was just it was it was a cool compendium of stories. The Wolverine story, uh, I, I wrote my own conclusions. I say I like that the stories were not connected to each other. I read a lot of stuff online where folks said they didn't like that, mm. but I like that they weren't. In, I like that they were connected by an event, but they were not connected to each other. Like you didn't yeah. have Wolverine running in the past Daredevil at any point in the story. The mix of comedy details was a bit odd, but I, I enjoyed it personally because it's you know, yeah, a Marvel series the, in, in Marvel movies they're always dealing with some really serious threat but there's always the one liners and the yeah. nonsense that goes with it um, I don't know how much I don't know one of the suggestions that I read online was somebody said they should do all the comedy stories in a compendium and all the serious stories in there <laughs> I don't think I'd like that um, I find the comedy quite I think constant comedy would that almost make a mockery of the event as a whole but I don't know yeah. um, the Wolverine story was well cool it made me think about I said there are things like the policeman and uh, the battle in New York from a mum or a child on the floor um, in the Daredevil story I think if you're following this event you, if, I can imagine you could overlook these books because it's not part of the main mm. but actually that Daredevil that Daredevil story is essential if you're a completist I think I see. Okay. Um, and that was my comics this week good alright well you were talking about uh, Daredevil there and well Daredevil's a big feature of my next comic but it's a Daredevil comic and I have to say um, I'm not a big Marvel reader, I'm not a big superhero fan, but I did pick up this one because I I'd just heard that it was it was quite interesting. So um, I think it's on about issue three or four now. So I've only read read one so far. Um, the writer is Chip Zdarsky, um, who will be at Glasgow Comic Con um, at the end of June. Oh, nice. So might be one to take along. Um, artist um, is uh, Mark Chichetto. Uh, with Sunny Glow on colours, very typical um, Marvel style artwork here. Um, and the kind of storyline is No Fear, K N O W, part one. So this is set after kind of the previous Daredevil arc where Daredevil was badly injured, hospitalised um, after saving a kid. I think he, he was run over by a bus or a truck or something. Mm. And he's really seriously injured. He's in hospital for a long time. Um, nobody knows what's happened to Daredevil. Meantime, the Kingpin has become mayor of yeah, New York. Yeah. Um, that's the storyline. So, so it's Daredevil getting back on his feet, basically, after this serious injury. Um, and I think perhaps because of the recent TV show, um, it kind of has that a lot, quite a lot of flashbacks to his youth. Yeah. which really resembles the, 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 the TV show. So for people that are maybe only know Daredevil through the TV show, not through the comics, it, it's a comfortable yeah. place for them to start with cool. Daredevil, uh, for sure. So you're, you're getting these kind of uh, flashbacks to you know the church scenes with the, the, you know, the priest and stuff, and his dad, and, and all that kind of thing, to give you that, that sense of um, familiarity. Pers- yeah, familiarity with, with Daredevil. Um but um, 
there's a couple of really good things here, I think, um, about this this story is that Daredevil, because he's been out of the action for so long, he's kind of, you know, lost it a little bit. Yeah. So he's trying to get back into things. And, um, you know, he goes out on in the town one night, you know, um, he, he goes to deal with a robbery at a, like, just like a booze store, local craft yeah. beer merchant, perhaps. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, he almost gets beaten up by these three hoods, these three low-life, you know, kind of nobody oh, hoods. Right. Um, and he's lucky to get away um, because he's, he's just so out of it. Um, but interestingly, you know, what you were uh, the other thing that I think is, is good about this is um, how different artists um, and writer combinations deal with his abilities. Yeah. So we saw that in the previous, in the, the War Scrolls. How um, you could hear the heartbeats and the sounds yeah. and things. So we're getting this kind of look of kind of his vision. Yeah, she's totally different. How yeah. he sees, yeah. Um, and it's a, I find that really interesting how different artists um, and, and uh, writers come up with uh, showing that. So even interesting. The way, even the way he's drawn as well. I'm looking at that and it's, yeah. it's more kind of his costume is, is much more detailed there than it is in, in, in the War Scrolls one. He's. Yeah, I think I think and perhaps also totally different, yeah. it's, it's not quite the the movie, um, the sorry TV show um, outfit, but um, it's got a slightly more more realistic look, I think, mm -hmm. because you can you can see the seams on the costume. Um, his his trousers are kind of tucked into his boots rather than them being a, a you know a lycra suit, which you kind of associate with the. Uh, with the uh, Daredevil, so you hear again. We're seeing kind of like Daredevil's vision here. Um, so a really good start to this series. It's one I think I will probably continue to read. I'm interesting to see um, where it goes. Yes. Yeah. Well, what's different here is that there's a new cop on the scene mm -hmm. who is looking to hunt down Daredevil. So um, this cop has been drafted in from Chicago. So clearly he's somebody who has nothing to do with. The Devil's uh, Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen, sorry. Um, so he's he's going to be, you know, he's not going to have links with the Kingpin or anybody else or any of the gangs and things. So this is uh, this guy, um, Nathan Cole, I think his name is. So he's been drafted in from Chicago. So And he looks as though he's going to be on the hunt for, for Daredevil throughout this series. Um, so, yeah, shaping up to be a, a rather good little run, I think. And I'm just going to also mention this backup story. Some, some comics have this extra little bit in the in the in the back. And Chip Zdarsky, the writer, is, is also an accomplished artist himself. Mm -hmm. And I, when I read this I, I didn't quite know what I was I was seeing. Um, so here's the storyline here. It's got that nine panel kind yeah. of look. You follow the storyline here, you know, as you would kind of normally in a comic, and then you get this here and I really I couldn't follow what I was seeing here. But actually what this is is the same nine panels but as Daredevil would see it. Oh, that's so that's it's in darkness. He can hear all these sounds and voices all around him, which you don't see in the normal panel. And he's trying to focus in on particular sounds. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of get the, the radar kind of effect as, as there's a big clang, as something is, you know, as he, as he hits something, and the noise is, is kind of exaggerated here. Yeah. And there's the. the it's a bit like um, the radar, sound. Yeah. like an echo, like sonar. And I really like this. I thought that's really interesting. Again, different artists came to take on it. Um, and it took me a, a couple of reads to see what was going on here. It wasn't until I got to the second page and I thought, oh, I see what's happening here. Mm. It's the same panels repeated. And I thought that's really cool. Of course, you know, you couldn't really do that for a whole book, I don't yeah, think. But as a, but just a, as a little, a tie, that's you know, four page or whatever backup story. Yeah. Really neat. So interesting to see how different artists yeah. have gone about that, that process. So that's Daredevil. I'm interested to see how no that develops because for, unless unless it's a different timeline than um, Marvel did a lot with several mm. Spider-Man yeah, tie-ins, for, for sure. example. It'd be interesting to see if these are tied in because like Wilson Fisk is the mayor mm. during the War yeah. of the Realms. Yeah, yeah. And um, but Daredevil was is very well established. I I, I was able to recognise the Daredevil from when I was reading them when I was like thirteen. Yeah. I, I recognised that Daredevil in this, mm. despite having not read a Daredevil comic for about 20 years, you know? Yeah, I've no idea. I, yeah, I expect it's probably separate yeah. story arcs. They won't touch each other. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that one. That's one I think I'll, I'll probably continue reading.
That sounds good. So, that's our last comic of oh, the week. It's beer. Oh, it's um, so it's our last beer as well. A wild beer company um, to these lovely little cans. Yeah. I think I've not really, I don't think they maybe do a bottle. I've maybe not seen yeah, it yet. We'll see but um, this, this is called this Pogo. And it's a pale ale with passion fruit, orange and guava. Yeah, I need okay, a guava. So they've almost taken the letters of the ingredients yeah. there to make Pogo. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, so, I like guava <laughs> as, a, as an ingredient. Whoa. Yeah, you're getting a, the smells of those fruits coming out quite powerfully. Mm, that passion fruit and mm-hmm. yeah, the, the guava in particular. Mm-hmm. It smells like a mongo. <laughs> well, if you remember a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they drunk. They used to drink in the Congo. Indeed, um, did. Uh, this is it is inspi- the beer is inspired by a childhood fruit drink that somebody presumably whoever came up with the idea had when he grew up in Hawaii. All right. Um, which, so, is well beer, which is like well beer company, I believe, is based in it's it's a, a West Coast, which is down in I think Birminghamshire ish. I don't know. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, it's really. A little, little bit of fruit coming through there. Mm. Not as strong in the flavour as as in the nose. But stronger than but, stronger than other fruit, fruit yeah, smell yeah, and stuff sure, we've yeah. had. Yeah. That is a very very pleasant beer. Yeah. Not bad at all. Very easy drinking. What, what, I wish it was slightly What's cold. the ABV on that? It's quite low. I don't really picked it. That's not actually. I'm telling. I have not noticed. I thought it was quite low. It's a uh, it's four point one, so it's a wee bit lower than the the lager we just had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I I picked these two because I knew that you were driving, so I um I don't really picked the two that had the least um the least ABV. Well, that's really really tasty. Uh, I wish it was a bit. wee bit colder, but that, yeah. that, that that's yeah. that, that's a personal yeah. preference. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that would be a lovely summer drink. Absolutely, barbecue. That would, yeah, that yeah, flavour would go go well. I know you're you're not a meat drink, eater, but um, I think as, with a bit of meat or something that no. would be very pleasant. I enjoy meat substitute burgers. <laughs> and I think that, that that would go well with a Linda McCartney quarter pounder. Uh, now, um, again, quite inexpensive. I think Well Beer Companies is quite a Well Beer Company is quite a big. Mm-hmm. It's it's quite it's it's quite a big brewery, uh, compared to some, and as mm-hmm. a result, they're able to get out quite a lot. I am. Um, Obviously, I've, I've had wild beer brew, before, uh, wild beer company stuff before. I, I didn't get it in um, I didn't get it in uh, the Caledonian craft beer merchant though. Right. I don't think they were open at that point. I got it mm-hmm. somewhere. I got it in um, somewhere else, and uh, yeah, it was inexpensive both times. And that's just a beer. Um, are we just gonna say we pogos? The, the, uh, you seem to enjoy that. I, I like that. It, yeah. I, I like both of them, but I prefer. Do yeah. prefer the pogo? Okay. Yeah, I would, I would certainly drink the the cashmere lager from Overtone again. This is getting trickier and trickier. Very I mean, the first, the first but, week we were all over the place, but actually, <clears throat> but as a fruity beer, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. I like that one. And there's not many I can say that about. Yeah, I'm finding fruity beers more enjoyable than I did. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Do you have any idea what you're going to be reviewing next week? I have no idea. I will be making a trip to the local beer shop and comic shop uh, probably soon um, not entirely the shirt I mean, I am I, I've a got a DC case. series I'm reading that I think ends next week mm. I don't know I don't know my release yeah. schedule yeah. I might review that um, there's a, I mean, a six part series a Batman series called about the Dark Knight who laughed oh yes um, or the Batman who laughed sorry who's um, mm. who was a bad guy in the DC universe who's relatively new he came mm. out a couple of years ago yeah. Um, but he's had a series, a six-part series that ends very, very soon, and I want to try and look at something a wee bit more obscure. Um, no, but he's going to continue in the new Batman Superman. He is. Type yeah. of, um, he is. I don't think it's just a very, very popular. Um, yeah, very I, th- popular I think film. so. I think that's but the, the six-part series has been quite enjoyable, and again, has has has. We'll get there, but there's been a mm-hmm. there's been a very psychological edge to how he's interacted with Batman, which I find quite enjoyable. Um, He's like the best Batman, but with the Joker's morals. It's he's, he's, yeah. he's a very interesting um, he's a very interesting villain, and the series was good as a result. So we'll look at that. I'm um, also um Scott Burry suggested Tank Girl, so I had a wee private mm. conversation with okay. Scott and said like, what Tank Girl do you think I should look at? And he was like, well, any. He's like, he's, he's just think she's a really good series. So I've got Volume One next door that I might oh, review. Okay. 
Yeah, I might, I might look at some, some uh, graphic novels or, or trades as well, trade paperbacks, because um, I've got plenty of them that I could be looking at. Um, okay, beer-wise, yeah, I'll just go and see what I can pick up. Yeah, but I'm, I, I, I'm interested to try maybe some more of the overtone stuff um, and some more of the brew tune. We had a little look at it earlier, I think I'll try some of that. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, ho- I'm hoping... I don't know. Me yeah. and Con need to talk about this stuff before, but I'm hoping also like to have. I think it's probably a good idea to get this out early because I would like folk to pick this up in the next day or so and realise that on Saturday it's a free comic book day. Oh yeah, of course. So if you go to your local comic book shop, I'll say I'm going to be up at um, local shop of heroes. You're going to be in costume. Are you cosplaying? Um, if I'm feeling up to it, I'll be. Yeah. In, I'll come along and, and probably be in costume at local shop of heroes. It's pretty much what I got asked. I've been in local shop of heroes three times in the last couple of weeks, and every time it's like, are you coming? Yes, I've already told you. Are you going to be in costume? No, I've already told you that as well. But, um, yeah, I'm, so I'm, free, I'm, I'm free comic already... book day, free comics, it's a, a limited sort of set, you know, there's special comics that are published for free comic book day. Sometimes they're issue ones of a series that's maybe been out for a wee while and they re-release them or sometimes they're one-off specials yeah. um, or they're issue zeros of a oh, series oh, that's about yeah, to come. I've which definitely is a nice little prelude um, and some of them I've, I've 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 used them as an excuse to pick up new series yeah yeah. because it's a nice little just you know gentle introduction there are some that are kind of almost little anthologies with maybe three or four stories in them as well well worth a look and you get all ages comics and things as well not just um, you know your kind of mainstream stuff also um, uh, one last thing I will say um, and I don't know is I was speaking to um, Colin in the Caledonia Craft Beer version and if you're in the firm um, if you have a Ghostbuster themed Costume. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like you might, you might end up just looking a bit silly, right? <laughs> but um, if you have a Ghostbuster themed costume, it might be a good idea to go to the Caledonian craft beer merchant for some of your beer. Mm-hmm. But I'm, it might be, it might be, because Colin shared an idea with me, but I don't know if he's going with it. But if you decide to go to a Dunfermline comic shop in in some sort of Ghostbuster costume, you should go to the Caledonian craft beer merchant. I'm intrigued. You might get a wee deal on something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you, Colin, for joining me. Thank um, you. And yeah. cheers. cheers. See you next time.